Hello and welcome to The Zoo Fanatic is Drunk, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. I'm Kayla. I'm Gina. And I'm Josh. For the first time since season five, we want to welcome Gina back to our panel through Ooh. the a uh, wonderful world that they call Zoom. Thank and goodness I am, for a Zoom. Mm -hmm. I'm really grateful to be back because I've missed y'all. We've <laughs> missed having you on board too. Zoom has uh, given us uh, an opportunity to uh, engage in discussions with people that we generally don't get to have on the panel anyhow. Uh, we've had uh, four special guests on our panel this season. Uh, today we're going to be going over a graphic text that Kayla selected uh, with the first pick in the season 13 draft, and uh, that is Why the Last Man, Volume 1, Unmanned, by Brian K. Vaughn. So Kayla, do you have uh, a general overview of this piece and a discussion starter? Yeah, so uh, generally speaking, basically your main character is Yorick Brown, and he finds out that every other living creature or every other mammal on the planet with a Y chromosome has uh, just suddenly up and died, leaving him and his capuchin monkey Ampersand as the only two remaining males on the planet. So I guess my um, question for you guys would just like really generally like what did you think about this what do you think the overall theme of this book is supposed to be where do you think the series as a whole is headed from this volume this was brilliant because i really admired the straightforwardness the humor the honesty vaughn took the direction that just because an entire gender one that has arguably inflicted a great deal of antagonism onto the human species and thus the world species because you can argue that humanity is the Earth's dominant species. Uh, just because everybody with a Y chromosome is gone, save for Yorick and Ampersand, doesn't mean that the world is a perfect place. Yeah, I think that's a really fair point. I loved that, that they pick up like two months after it happened and you're seeing them trying to get back to some to, to some like semblance of normalcy, but it's really skewed and um, doesn't really work the way it used to. And they're trying to come up with these like alternate methods of surviving and I loved right after it happened they gave you that page of statistics about um how much of the how many of the world leaders we lost you know I thought that really put a good perspective on what the mm -hmm. world would really look like 48 percent of the global population or 2.9 billion 495 of the fortune 500 CEOs 99 percent of the world's landowners we can keep going on and on with that I think that that was that was as per page 39. I think one of the interesting parts is the political jabs that it takes. With the case of the gender, uh, it more so brings attention to the great divide between the two-party system in the United States and how the bigger concern is the wives of the husbands that were in public office are now fighting for their seats and doing so in a very uh, warlike manner. Just the political banter in general, how they incorporate the fact that they make decisions based off of political opportunity and how their main goal is to get reelected, which all of these things are relevant to our society too. Yeah, and I think that's interesting too, since this is, it's not super old, but it's definitely older. Like this didn't come out a couple of years ago. I, I want to say it came out in the early 2000s. So yeah. I think that it, the fact that it's still so politically relevant is super interesting. Mm -hmm. It came out in 2002. I thought that it was a very interesting story. I like how they presented the idea of true men traditionally have been oppressive, but half the fact that half of them just straight up disappeared, not, not only did it not them. solve any problems. All except two of them. Well, yeah, except for Ampersand and Yorick. Did, not only did it not really solve any problems, it created new ones. Mm -hmm. And then Yorick, I like Yorick as a character because he's a very, like, he's reckless as you go through throughout the story he seems to like he just doesn't care he's just got this devil may care attitude he'll just rush into anything he does exercise some level of restraint such as when the trash lady was chasing him well the lady who remember like that character oh yeah that was the, she yeah. wanted to kill him so that she could uh sell his body 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. While he was very reckless, I also found York to be a voice of reason. He wants to uh, make his own choices in life. And I think that while some of them want him to reproduce with all of the women in the world, in order to replenish the population. He personally only wants to reproduce with his uh, fiance. And I I love that, like his story is, yeah, I mean like, sure, I guess we could solve this issue of all of the men being gone, but really I'm more worried about getting to Beth. Like I Mm -hmm. I love that he, he's such like an average Joe kind of character. He's intelligent, but not geared towards things that would be useful Mm. in a society like this. But he's not preachy and he doesn't impose his choice on other people yeah even if he is to uh even if he banters with the agent that he that's a big part of why they didn't get along was because she's a very no-nonsense kind of lady and he's a little reckless like he's reckless but he has restraint he's not heartless he has people that he cares about like his mother his fiance and then his sister too something i also wanted to ask was uh, what are your thoughts about the uh, amazons they're terrifying i think that you're bound to get gangs like that in a and i mean you have gangs like that in any society like Mm -hmm. we have gangs like that in our society people that hate the other gender so i think you're bound to see groups like that no especially in like an apocalyptic situation like this but i think that the how like widespread they are is scary like you are you're Mm. bound to run into them you can't avoid them and you've read the entire series yeah so i'm not really gonna pick your brain at the uh uh, future books because i i want to make my way through them i was sold i'm I'm really really glad that you liked this I was so nervous to like introduce this as my book Mm. because it's such a bizarre Mm. concept and choice so I'm really glad that you guys enjoyed it. I didn't know what I was gonna think. I thought it was very clever. The way that Brian K. Vaughn uh, ran away with this idea was just, I was just like wow. I mean as far as the Amazons are are concerned I think that they bring up some pretty solid arguments in their favor. They're being general. Just because these are things that happen doesn't mean they apply to all yeah, like I didn't like the way that I think it was Victoria had heavily yeah. implied that Yorick was a rapist. I didn't like that. Like that was unnecessary. No, you you can't imply just because most of your rapists are men does not right. mean all of them are. And or, or that all men are. No, Victoria is probably my least favorite character in the in at least the first book because oh, she's very sly. She's manipulative. She'll she double talks. But it was interesting to see how York's sister joined the group. She doesn't know that he's still alive. She's just looking to get herself involved with a particular group. But at the same time, she's also had very poor luck with men. Yeah, I was just going to point that out. Like, York says she's had really bad relationships in the past. So for her to go down that path kind of makes sense. Because mm-hmm. she's been jaded before. Yeah, I mean, she's also she's also seen very desperate because uh when her and that the one guy are in the the ambulance uh when there's something going on and they're having their way yeah those the other um girls all implied that like she slept her way through multiple mm-hmm. people in the group and stuff so yeah i think it, it's definitely the most logical path for her to have taken in that kind of a world other things that i wanted to bring up here were the uh how amazing uh pia guerrera was with the artwork i think that the way that the artwork is uh, in this text is quite amazing this is just yeah. a random page that i you have other scenes something like this yeah i loved all of those like i guess they're like almost between the chapters those really detailed beautiful art i, I believe p is a woman i'm not sure i didn't like fact mm. check that but um she does great art throughout the whole series it's phenomenal yeah i'm really intrigued to keep going i have the second book within why the last man uh, between that and series of unfortunate events i haven't really touched series in quite some time i read the millennium trilogy but i don't think i read anything since aside from alice's adventures in wonderland and through the looking glass but that's a duology and they Pretty were in the simple. same comic books but this is a comic book but i was going to say that the amazons kind of reminded me of an in the flesh version of a lot of these internet groups that you know how you have these forums where you have these oppressed people who get together but they're angry 
angry and yelling instead of using their anger in a constructive way. That's what they kind of reminded me of. And what these people are basically doing, like they have reason to be angry, but they're using their anger in a destructive way rather than constructive way. Like mm -hmm. instead of instead of actually doing anything to help women who are oppressed, they're just going, oh, all men must suffer because of the actions of some bad ones. It's it's the blame tactic, and the blame to tactic is a very toxic approach that causes greater issue in society. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Gina. They're definitely like, and I mean, I'm I'm about as feminist as anybody can possibly get, but they're definitely Thank like uh, like human mm. feminazis. They're they're the type of women that give feminists a bad reputation. Mm. Feminism means equal. It doesn't. Right. It doesn't mean better. I think that we, we should be striving to be equal, but I don't think anybody is better than anybody else. And I don't think anybody should be striving to that. But I, I think the term Amazons is a good way to describe a group of uh, man-haters. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, Wonder Woman would love it, mm -hmm. but she's not here. So mm -hmm. I do want to point out that um, Brian K. Vaughn also wrote The Walking Dead series. Um, and he wrote on Lost, like the TV show for a while as well. I've read, I think I've read at this point, most of his graphic novels. I've read The Walking Dead, This, and Saga. This and Saga outweigh The Walking Dead tenfold. Like The Walking Dead mm. has absolutely nothing on these two series. Both mm. of them are outstanding. I haven't read The Walking Dead, but I think that zombies are not a favorite thing of mine. I, I will read about them, but... I think this is good thought, Candy. Yeah, I agree. I think this is, it's really thought-provoking graphic mm -hmm. novels. Yeah, I would say so. I would say this is up there with, uh, with Mouse and Persepolis, Killing Joke. Do we have any uh, final thoughts? So a couple more things I was going to add. I thought it was very interesting, but I know it was completely illogical, but also very interesting how the Doctor character sort of blamed herself for what had happened, but then at the same time, the fact that they encouraged her to continue cloning, and that's a big part of what makes me want to read more of the series. Well, first of all, I want to find out more about what happens to Yuri. I also want to find out, well, is this lady, what's going to happen to humanity, and is this doctor going to clone more people? Oh, you mean Dr. Man? Yeah. She was an interesting character because original uh, impression was that she was uh, looking to inseminate and clone the baby baby for her individual satisfaction, but she was actually doing it in order to uh, help someone else. But, and it wasn't her intent to uh, interfere with, with everything going on, because they're sensing that this was the main source of the, the incident, but we have no idea. And from what my friend Dan tells me, we never do. That's why Dan says he never wants to read this book. Do you guys think that it was, because um, it happens literally at the same time that she's giving birth, do you think it was, that was just like a bizarre coincidence, or do you think that Dr. Mann had something potentially to do with it? I would, I would think it was a coincidence. Right now, I would go with coincidence, but I'd like to read the rest of the series, and I'll gather the facts there. I'll have to think about that. But... I've read it, so I don't get an opinion. <laughs> uh, okay. Not right now. No, no. <laughs> and then I just thought that the addition of an animal character for comic relief, Ampersand, and I love how in the beginning, York's intention is, oh, I have this monkey, and I'm gonna train him to do something useful he just turns out just as this book goes on he's just this crazy stereotypical monkey who adds some light some humor to a story that's otherwise kind of dark i would say that he provides a sense of comic relief uh he's a little bit of an annoying critter i wouldn't say he's the sole source of comic relief i do think that York himself provides us with a sense of comic relief with his one-liners, with his recklessness. York's mother kind of reminds me of Charlie and Alan's mother from Two and a Half Men. Yes, if they, I think they were supposed to be working on like a live action version. She would be the perfect casting for his mom. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> and I don't even like Two and a Half Men. No, me either. <laughs> that, that's just what I think. It turns out that's what we think. Kind of want to read the rest of the series now, and I'm not much of a graphic novel kind of person so this was a little outside my alley but I want to 
read the rest of the series now. Oh, me too. I'm going to probably buy the entirety of the series. Uh, I think it's 10 books. Yeah, I think so. I've got them in like slightly larger volumes. So mine mm-hmm. is five, but it would make sense then if, it, if it's like 10 in the smaller volumes. Okay. Yeah, this has one and two. this is book one so it's okay. got one and two i'll look into it and i'll invest in it any either with any way you put it but how would we rate this zero to five stars half stars permitted kayla honestly i would say four and a half this has always been one of my favorite series since i first read it it's the books that like launched me into graphic novels i think it's a really well done series i think it's a lot of fun all the way through and you get through it fast. I would say four and a half, actually maybe five stars, just because it's funny, it's also poignant, and then it touches on a very interesting, what I would say, sensitive topic for some people, but does it in such a humorous and such a brilliant way. As you already said before, the artwork is amazing Mm. too. And then there's good character development, like Yorick, for instance, as we were saying, is somebody who is relatable for a lot of people. And then you also have, I know she's not really an important character, at least not in this book, but the sister, the fact that she has all these negative experiences with men and then gets involved with the Amazons. And I see that with women, where women get their hearts broken and then they develop this mentality of, oh, men are trash. This this book does just a great job putting all of the pieces together. And now we're gonna be in for quite an amazing adventure. Uh, This is gonna probably be the last discussion that you're gonna be taking part in in quite some time, uh, Kayla. Josh. (laughs) I'm gonna leave you off on top, but I'm gonna give this a five. Yes, I feel like I just won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this book was great. I think that it just had all of the elements for something that was enjoyable. Uh, it was, it's haunting and thought provoking. And it's enjoyable in the way that it, it was a thrill to make my way through. And I, I read this in one day. Uh, I can't say one sitting because uh, I probably got up to get some water or uh, <laughs> tend to an errand. I read this in between because uh, I was reading other things for season 13. This has been quite a delight. Probably the best thing I read thus far for the season. If you're interested in checking out this graphic text, Here is a copy. This is book one, which includes Unmanned and Cycles. And I'm going to purchase the rest. By the time this video comes out, Kayla, you will probably be, uh, you and Brian will be taking care of a little baby boy. A little future literary gladiator himself, I'm sure. Ready, God. (laughs) I'm pretty sure that you will, uh, you and Brian will be a great influence and you'll get him into reading. Thanks, Josh. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We hope to have you back in the future, but uh, we always uh, admire having you on board any way we put it. Thanks. It's been a fun ride and I'm sure it's not over, but Alrighty. you know, for now. Alrighty then. Uh, and be sure to check Kayla out with her friend Brooke on Drunk in the Library, uh, which is uh, Kayla's podcast, which you can find on any form of social media, primarily Anchor, but you can also find it on Spotify, YouTube. For now, and as always, we encourage you to keep reading. Hi there, this is Josh, and on the next episode of Literary Gladians, Casey, Charlie, Cindy, and I will be discussing Hiroshima by John Hersey. Uh, If you like what you see on this channel, please support us on Patreon, for the money that we make on our channel will allow us to provide you, the viewer, with even more great content. Uh, Be sure to join us, and for now, keep reading.